Hello, my name's Dave and welcome to my channel. So today, this is my three month old Kawasaki Ninja H2 SX SE Performance Tourer. And I've had this for about three months. I bought it myself. So it's not a long term loan or, you know, I haven't borrowed it from a shop to do a quick review and throw it back. I've put my money where my mouth is and I've actually gone out and bought one of these things. So at nearly £30,000, I didn't pay that much for it, but at, you know, recommended retail price at nearly £30,000, you would expect this bike to be absolutely no compromise. The flagship bike of Kawasaki. Uh, but this is a no bullshit channel and I can tell you now that there are some compromises. So there are a few things that I absolutely hate about this bike. It really boils my piss. There are a few things that I just don't like that I think could have been done better. And then there's a little niggles list. So let me take you through the five things that I hate about my Kawasaki Ninja H2 SX SE. It's 27 degrees and I'm sweating, but let's get on with it. So Kawasaki, you better take notice because I've made a list. <laughs> This list is in reverse order, so this is a thing that does bug me uh, because on my VFR 800, which was also a sports touring bike, um, this it was better on my VFR. So number five then is the underseat storage on this H2. So this is a sport tourer, don't forget, and underneath this back seat, There is literally just a little tray here. There's a tiny, tiny tool kit. They put a double USB socket and there's also my Optimate charger. On the VFR, I used to get in my Oxford tool kit, my camera um, charger, every, you know, everything that I needed to charge from my camera, my power banks. I used to also get uh, my stickers in there and my um, cloths and my visor wipes and everything. I literally can only get my stickers in there, which is, yeah, when, when you've been used to sticking stuff under your seat for so long, uh, that's actually a real pain in the butt for me. So I can't get anything in that back, uh, under the back seat, apart from my stickers. So yeah, I think that could have been done a hell of a lot better. There's plenty of room <laughs> underneath to do something there, um, but they didn't. So that's my number five. Okay, my number four. This one has wound me up quite a lot because you want to look after a bike like this, don't you? Make sure it's pristine all the time. Well, I do anyway. And number four is the screen on this bike. So this has got the upgraded smoke screen on it. And I think after the first two times of using the bike, there was a little mark on the screen that wouldn't come off with the shampoo. And I'm not kidding you. All I did was that. I've got no nails so I did that with my finger to see what it was and it seemed like it was the coating of the the smoked effect on the on the uh, screen it seemed like the coating had been sort of chipped a little bit and what happened was as I was rubbing it you probably can't see it on here it's literally scratched the shit out of the screen I'll show you a picture because it's pretty bad you can't see it from a distance but I know it's there and when you walk up to the bike, it's the first thing I look at. It's really annoying. So the coating for this screen, I don't know if it's on the outside, whereas other, other screens, it's like in the middle sandwiched, but yeah, you touch that the front of that screen and it just scratches up really badly. So I'll put a picture here to show you. The second thing about this screen is that at 70 mile an hour on the motorway, I get so much buffering, like fast buffering on my shoulders. I'm five foot eight and a half, and I get really fast buffering, um, you know, buffeting from the wind on my shoulders and on the side of my helmet. So it's sort of da -da 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 -da. Uh, and it does drive you mad after a bit. So you do have to power out of it a little bit, which is not good, is it? So at 70, this sports tourer, hyper tourer, should be really comfy. 
um, with no buffeting at all, but there is unfortunately. I would imagine a taller screen on that would look horrendous, so I'm not going to change it. It's just one of those things I'm going to have to put up with, I think. Oh man, it's so hot. So we're getting slightly worse here. The, this is the first thing I noticed about this bike. So this is number three on my list and it is the side stand. This is a really heavy bike and it's got a little side stand on it that's from what I can see it's made for a sport bike not a heavy lump like this. So when I first put this on its side stand and got off it for the first time I actually thought it was going to tip over and it's really worried me that much that I've gone ahead and I've bought the RNG um, foot stand. Now this is a, a really heavy sport tour. I think Kawasaki should have put a massive foot on there at least as big as that RNG uh, to tuck up there. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible stand and when you've got your tent on the back seat and you need to use the pegs to step up on and step over I don't trust that stand at all. So the number three for me is that side stand. It's absolutely abysmal. Um, it rocks all over the place, worries the hell out of me. The centre stand, however, is absolutely fantastic. But the side stand is my number three. So number two on my list. This is supposed to be a no compromise bike. There are some really expensive components at the front of this bike, namely the downpipes there, whatever you call them and the radiator, massive radiator there, keeping everything nice and cool. There are no guards on the front of that bike. So again, I've got to go out and buy some radiator guards and you know the headers guards, whatever they call it, the exhaust guards. And I think they're a couple of hundred quid for that. And at nearly 30,000 quid, you should have put some bloody guards on there, Kawasaki, um, because everything gets thrown at that radiator. I'm constantly having to brush it off. So yeah, that's my number two. It should have had radiator and pipe covers at the front, which it hasn't. So here it is then. Here is my number one. The number one thing, and this is the thing that I hate about this bike. I absolutely hate it. So it has got keyless ignition, right? And I know most bikes have these days, but this annoys the hell out of me. So keyless ignition, got this massive massive chunky key anyway and I get why they've probably done it you know for security and all that crap although it does feel very plasticky this ignition stem but you know what do I know the annoyance for me is is I'm used to going under the back seat of my bike and in the panniers and obviously getting fuel and you have to get fuel quite a lot on this bike if you if you're playing around a lot on, on the twisties I have to find this key all the time there's nowhere for me to put this key apart from in my pocket and i'm not used to doing that so i'm always forgetting which pocket i put it in have i left it at home did i start it up and leave it in the shed i get off at the garage and i need to find the key to put in the in the fuel cap there because the fuel cap's not keyless and it should be that should be keyless but it isn't so i have to go fumbling around for the key to fill it up with fuel also when i want to lock the helmet on the bike again i've got to use the key and obviously when i go in the under the back seat i've got to use the key and on the panniers when the panniers are on so to unlock them and to lock them and also to take them off and put them on i've got to use the key so i'm constantly just trying to remember that I've remembered the key, if you know what I mean. I've tried putting it around my neck on one of those uh, lanyard things, but that's a nightmare because they're never long enough. So you're sort of squatting down. Um, but the number one thing for me that really annoys me about this bike is the fact that there's nowhere to put the key. Every bike I've had, you've got somewhere to put the key in the ignition. And if they're not going to do that, they should give you somewhere else to put it. But they haven't and that really winds me up especially when you're out camping so yeah that's the number one thing i can't stand about my bike is the fact that it's keyless ignition so it is quite breezy today so apologies if there's a lot of wind noise on this um i do have some niggles as well about the bike so these are any niggles and this full disclaimer I love the pants off this bike. I absolutely love it. Um, so much so that I went out and bought it. I broke my bank to buy this. So 
yes there's always going to be things that i don't like but all in all man this bike is so good and i'll be doing a top five things that i love about this bike but there are some also some little niggles the first niggle is that when i sat on this bike at the motor show i could flat foot it and i think what they've done is at the motor show they must have had a shorter seat on it and maybe drop the suspension right down so it you know seemed to appeal to everyone um but this with the comfy seat on uh, i mean it's a great seat it's really comfy i don't get any problems with it but i'm literally ball of the feet um and that does cause me some problems sometimes i am getting used to it but it is a big old lump of a bike and i'm not used to having to push a bike around on my tippy toes uh, so that's a little niggle another niggle i've got if you saw my last video is the color um i wanted a black bike that was it just wanted all my stuff is bikes are black cars are white uh, that's how i've always lived and you can't get this bike in any other color than that if you go for the se performance tourer model they won't put all them upgrades on the black bike which is the base model and i would rather have the black color which is full black with just a few bits of green on the fins there um, so I couldn't get a black one um, which was a bit shocking really considering you're paying all that money um, I mean the colour has grown on me I do love it but I would definitely prefer a black one but that's just me that's just a little niggle okay another little niggle I've got is the panniers that it comes with have got the straps in uh, to hold the bags in already one of my straps has broken so all the stitching's come undone on the on the pannier strap and it's just fell off and they've told me it's taken into a service center they'll take a picture of it and they'll replace it i can just see the next pannier doing the same thing because it doesn't look like the straps are that well made so that's a little niggle the straps are not very good they're brilliant when they're working but mine's obviously broken the stitching's come undone so it's not working at all really so that's a little niggle another niggle i've got and i'm reserving judgment on this one um so the 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 kawasaki kawasaki ha oh, kawasaki <laughs> the kawasaki applications that you get for your mobile phone uh, i think there's two of them i've had to turn off connectivity for the bike because i haven't had time to go through and start messing around with them i did try and failed horrendously but what seems to happen is when you've got the phone connected to the bike the bike opens the app on the phone automatically and leaves it open. You have to have your phone unlocked to, to use any of the features on the app. However, I mean, that's bad enough as it is, isn't it? Because you're going to have no battery left. But when I'm on a ride and it does that, if I want to change the suspension settings and all the stuff that I usually change on the screen on the bike, it seems to stop me from doing that and it wants me to use the app on my phone which obviously i can't because it's in my pocket or my gloves don't use the touch screeny thing very well now i'm reserving judgment on that because that might be me but the apps for this seem like an absolute pain in the butt so hold the phone for that one i'll come back to the apps and probably do a full review on the apps later on the last little niggle I've got, and actually this might not be a little niggle, this is an actual problem that Kawasaki have got right now at the moment. Cornwall Kawasaki have been amazing, right? Absolutely phenomenal. The guys there seem to be fully trained up, they know exactly what they're doing with this bike, and they got it all set up and ready to go. However, 250 miles away to my local Kawasaki dealers here, if I take this bike in and ask them any questions about it, they haven't got a scooby-doo what answer to give they don't know it's as if they don't know what the bike can do or what it does or what it's supposed to do i've asked them loads of questions about stuff i don't understand on the bike they haven't got a clue they just keep telling me to read the manual so kawasaki you've got a problem there this is an amazing machine and the guys that you've put on point to work on these machines for servicing mot all that kind of stuff my experience locally here in the west midlands is that they really don't know what they're doing so something needs to be done there but i, I actually dread going into the kawasaki dealers local to me um i wish i lived closer to cornwall because they'd sort me out in a heartbeat uh, but i don't so and um, that seems to be a little problem that kawasaki have got thought i'd let you know that one 
tell me if you've had the same sort of experience when talking about these bikes. Um, the, obviously, the sales guys know what they're doing. They know how to sell. They could sell ice to Eskimos, couldn't they? But it's the mechanics that I seem to be struggling with and the people that actually will be working on this bike in the future. So I've just met a subscriber at the CAF, uh, Tom. So I'll put his channel name up here somewhere. Uh, there you go over and check his channel out see what it's like I'll have a look as well when I get back nice to meet you Tom mate and uh, yeah you're always welcome for a bimble about with us old folk nice to meet new people isn't it back on track what was we on about yeah so this is where I struggle really I'm on my tippy toes here and it's a heavy bike uh, but I'm getting used to it I'm a big boy I can handle it So yeah, those are the five hates or pet hates about this bike and a few niggles. Uh, it's, it's actually the niggles that add up to quite a bit, don't they? Um, you know, you put a load of niggles together and they, and they end up as one big problem, really. Uh, but yeah, I would have thought a bike of this calibre um, wouldn't have compromised on some of those things. But the keyless ignition... I, I absolutely hate it. I mean, right now, uh, I have no, because I've been talking to Tom, I have no idea what I've done with my, I always usually put it in the same pocket. You know, that's the thing to do. Oh yeah, it is in my pocket. That's the thing to do, isn't it? Always put it in the same place so you never lose it. But you can't get it out when you've got gloves on at the station. Oh, it's an absolute pain. Uh, but there you go. We have to live with these compromises, don't we? I just didn't want to spend any more money or have to spend any more money than I already have on this bike you know for radiator guards and things like that but it does need them especially on a you know a hyper tour like this and it does flick up some right crap into that radiator but apart from all that don't get me wrong like I said this full disclaimer I think this is the greatest bike ever built no, you know, hands down, this is the best bike I have ever ridden or ever seen. I think it's an absolutely marvellous piece of machinery. And there are always going to be things that you don't like about anything you buy. You know, because everything is very personal, isn't it? So the, the things that I don't like, you know, somebody, somebody else might not mind. It might be fine for them. Uh, it's things like the screen. Maybe it's, I'm, I'm at that size where it's it's just annoying me that little bit more whether uh, you know whereas if you're six foot the screen's probably fine or if you're five foot i don't know uh so yeah they're all very um personal really personal to me uh, but the keyless ignition if you're going to do that kawasaki make sure everything else you put on the bloody bike doesn't need a key because that is so annoying <laughs> But there you go, and I'll get into the um, the technology at a later date because that's also very annoying. Um, but I'm reserving judgment on that because it might be just me being a, a fat thumbed oaf. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching this one. And uh, if you like this video and you want to see some more, then please subscribe to me. That would really help my channel. And uh, if you ever want to ride out, just drop me a message. Everyone's welcome on our rides. You've seen our videos. You've seen the people I hang around with. No airs and graces. We are who we are. We all ride our own ride without any problems at all. So you're always welcome to come out for a ride with us. And come and have a cup of tea, just like Tom just did. And uh, if this van doesn't pull out on me... Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right. Ugh. See you soon. Bye-bye.